crypto unlock schedules and dumping. So this was brought to my attention from CJ Reichel. He's an advisor to uh, uh, Marco Rebellion. Uh, Marco Rebellion, John and Pete Nigerian's company for uh, options trading and things like that. And he was just, we were chatting one day and he goes, hey, there's some pretty big unlocks coming up and some and potential dumps. And, uh, and we talked about it and I had him on the show and we did this show, gosh, was it four days ago or so? So I linked that in the description and uh, you can follow CJ Reichel on Twitter. I linked that in the description as well. And what we talked about in the video was data from uh, Masari. And the data will show a lot of different things. I mean, it'll show uh, how much you know private sale and public sale and VC funding and 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 um, uh, the community. And of course, we've seen uh, this type of data a lot, right? And uh, of course, if we're looking at the equality, of course, public sales. The more blue you have in this in this graphic, uh, I think the better. But uh, some people will say, now we need VCs and you know, I probably need some, some big money to be injected into it. But uh, you can see this, Polkadot, Cardano, Solana. And of course, you got community and insiders. So the more insiders you have, I think the more dangerous it is. I mean, it's, it's like fishing with dynamite. So uh, it's pretty effective, but it's dangerous. And uh, I think when you have a lot of insiders in there, the chance of it if, it, if everything goes along pretty well in the bull market, so much the better right? The bull market, great. Everybody's making money. Fine. But as the bear market comes in and you got a lot of people like, you know what? <laughs> I made a lot of money already. So maybe it's time for me to take it out all depending on the lockup schedules. So these are just something to, to look at, but these are just graphs. So like, how do you do your own research to make sure that this isn't like, did Rob create this? Did he just put it in? Eh. So maybe you can just go to this website called Masari.io. I linked it in the description. And I'm going to show you exactly how to find this data that will equal out to this stuff. So I found this fascinating. Uh, shout out to CJ again for helping me out with this one. So you go to Masari.io. It's going to come up with this nice bibbly bop of a bunch of information. And you got ROI, top assets, DeFi. And, you, and when you click on here, it's all the different assets you know, that are out there that you ever want to take a look at. But what's cool about this, I'm just going to start with Bitcoin. And then we'll go down, down the list for things you want to see. But if you, if you click on Bitcoin... It'll take you to a lot. Gr granted, it's a ton of stuff. I get you. But if you see overview profile markets, just click on profile. And then go to see right here where it says contributors, investors, and token economics. If you take a look at token economics, and it just it tells you like, like a history. This is just, you know, this is Bitcoin. If you go to uh, the launch and initial token distribution, of course, for this one, there was no like private sale and stuff like that because it's it was the very first. Toshi Nakamoto tells you exactly what it is. But what's interesting to me is these things, these graphs, what's called the supply schedule. And for Bitcoin, you can see it's pretty damn linear, pretty darn linear, right? I mean, of course, this is all by proof of work. So it all depends on, you know, the having. And of course, we can see it. Yeah, you can see it right here, how it gets cut. Having 2012, 2016. And of course, now we're really leveling off uh, because we're in a point right now where, you know, there's already, you've already mined 19 million and only got about a million and a half or so to go. So it's, it's pretty stable along this continuum, right? Gotcha. So that's the supply curve. And, and of course, you, there was no uh, private sales. So let's go back real quick. Burn for burn. Let me just click on Masari there. Let's look at Ethereum. So if I click on Ethereum, and the same thing, I'm going to click on Profile. I'm going to click on Token Economics. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. The launch and initial token distribution. And it'll tell you right here, the original token distribution event managed by Ethereum sold roughly 60 million Ethers, which was 80%. 80% of the initial 72 million ETH supply. Now, uh, the supply is, is infinite. There is no cap on Ethereum, but uh, it goes very slow. Sale took place between 2014, July and September 2014. The Ether purchased by crowd sale investors were not usable or transferable before the launch of the, of the block in 2015. So this was like the, the very beginning of the very beginning. So if you had a lot of money, I don't think there was any kind of like uh, provisions where you couldn't buy a ton of it. And uh, a lot of people did, but at least it was a little bit fairer. It wasn't like the, some kind of private sale. So 3,700 Bitcoin were raised in the first 12 hours because that's what they took. And that's why uh, Bitcoin maxis will talk about how this was a Ponzi scheme. 
because they're like, the only reason Ethereum is around is so they can get your Bitcoin, which I get it because they raised a ton of Bitcoin and then off it went. And if you want to take a look at the whole history, uh, take a look at uh, the infinite machine. Uh, it, was a, it was a behind the scenes look at uh, how Ethereum was created. Anyhow, so 3 million were allocated to a long-term endowment, 6 million were among 85 developers and so on and so forth. So founders and projects, 16%, 83% went to that crowd sale. Here's the supply schedule. And you kind of see it. I mean, this one looks fine too, right? 2015 is when it, when it got released and you saw a lot of people come in and you can just see that 22, let's see, rewards, the crowd sale participant, 64%. And it looks okay. And where are we at now? Around here. So we don't see a huge increase in unlocks. There's, there's, it, that's not how it is. That's how Ethereum is. So it's very linear, pretty darn safe, in my personal opinion. Now, let's take a look at something else. Eh, let's take, I'm going to skip forward to Algorand. So Algorand, I'm going to click on Profile. And I'm going to click on Token Economics. And it's going to tell you exactly what it is. The launch and initial token distribution. It was launched in June 2019. Public auction sold 25 million algos, or a quarter of the initial supply, at 240 per token. That's not bad. Raising a total of 60 million 402 thousand dollars. And then uh, the end of the sale, which created 10 billion algos at Genesis, a total of 2.5 billion, or 25 percent initial supply, were granted to the founders and the Algorand Foundation to support continued protocol development. Okay, gotcha. But Take a look at this, 10%. Let's, let's take a look at the supply breakdown. Founders and project is a quarter. Investors at 30%. So you're looking at 55% is in the hands of the few. And then you got 45%. So me personally, I like Algorand. Uh, Macaulay, I believe that's his uh, gentleman's name, um, touring award winner, very smart guy. Uh, and it looks like a pretty great project. It's just like I've always said, the tokenomics look a little bit off to me. And then you can take a look at this. Here's the liquid supply curve. This is not looking great. So when we saw with Bitcoin, it was pretty much a nice even, even out. Ethereum, the same thing. Now let's take a look at the supply curve here. So in 2021, you saw there was a big unlock supply. Bam, here we are in March 2021. And we saw it kind of gets going. Now January 12th, kind of a little bit of a linear or so. So, But you can see it's going up pretty high. 2023 so on and so forth. And then of course, there's another big unlock in 2024. And then the thing is, once these get in, unlocked, it's an opportunity to really start selling. Now, will that happen with Algorand? I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying you won't. I'm just giving you the information that you have so you can make the best decision for yourself. Let's take a look. Let's go back and take a look at Cardano. This ought to be good. So Cardano, again, profile. Token economics. Let's see here. Let's see here. So the public sale, it was all public sales, which is pretty much the data that we see over here. Ba, 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 ba. Cardano, a lot of blue, a lot of public sales. 17% were insiders, company, VC purchase tokens. Okay. 2% was the community allocation. All right. So let's see here. Initial supply, founders and project, investors, 83%. Let's break it down. Here's the liquid supply curve. It almost doesn't get any flatter than that. Let's just be honest. And there's a lot that's actually locked up right now. So as far as like supply curves and, and unlocks, first of all, you can unlock, there is no lockup periods. It's already already out there, essentially. And of course, for if you want to stake it, there's no like lockups like Avalanche. You just take it out and you want to sell it, you sell it. But very even kilter, not too bad. Now let's take a look at Avalanche. Where'd it go? Avalanche. Profile, token economics. Here we go. 360 million AVAX were minted and sold through public and private sales. All right. The remaining 360 are for staking rewards distributed over the following decades. That's not bad. Half and half. So staking rewards, 50% of the tokens were minted at launch. And then, of course, the remaining 360 will be utilized as staking. The seed sale, 2.5%. Private sale, 3.5%. Public sale op option, 1% to 1%. That seems kind of low. And then, of course, oh, that was an A1. 1%, then 8.3, then public sale, 0.67. Foundation, it doesn't matter. Let me just go over here. 
So again, founders and projects. That's a lot. 20%. Investors, 16%. But 64%. Here's the issue. The steepness of this supply curve. And you can see it. I don't have to. I mean, the things that we just took a look at, the steeper that the, the supply curve is, the more chance you have it for it to unlock and potentially be dumped. And that is just something that is what it is. So this is last year. You can see the steps. Where are we? We're right around, so March 7, 2020, between February and March was a big unlock. And then we have another one coming up around June 20th. So if you think there might be a dump coming, that's pretty good bet. And you're going to see it just going up and up and up and up. Of course, it's over years, I understand, but it doesn't take a lot in a 1.26 trillion market to change some favors. All right. And then lastly, let's look at, why don't I get back here? There we go. Let's look at Solana. So Solana, overview in history, investors, token economics. Let's see. No, no, no. Launch initial token. Okay. Breaks it down like this. 15 point, almost 16% of the seed round investors. Those are the people that get in early, right? 2.6 to founding, to founding sales investors. So you're looking at almost 20%. 5% to, valid, to validators, which I got to tell you, it's super hard to be, a, that's not super hard to be a validator. You just got to have a ton of Solana to be a validator. Almost 2% to strategic sale investments, 1.6 to public auction, eh, 12 and a half to team members, 12 and a half to the Solana Foundation, 30% to the community. All right, that's not bad. So here again, what we got, founders and projects and investors, Pre-mine rewards and airdrops. So I like that part. But 25 and 37, I'm not too sure. Here's a supply schedule. So I know people are worried about it. But in all honesty, the big supply unlock already happened. So we had December 14th, December 28th, 2020. And then January 11th, 2021, that was the big unlock. And you probably saw a little bit of a dip, but that's what it is. But if you can take a look here, it's actually pretty stable and you can just take a look as far as things move along staking rewards founders where are we let me go to here so you go from staking rewards 9.6 percent on may 30th to the next swing up 9.8 percent so not by much in all honesty so even if we're worried about like well this big unlock schedule honestly looks pretty linear of course, until we go to like 2027, but ah, whatever, that's what it is. So anyhow, if there's anything else you guys would like to see as far as these unlock schedules, drop that in the comments right now and I'll take a look. If not, and you can do all the, the data collection you want to, I gave you the information. Masari.io, I told you exactly how to go. Profile, tokenomics, look it all up. Be aware of these unlock schedules because potentially that could be one of those times they might see a dump and be like, why did that happen? Oh yeah, that's what it is. Of course, that's the whole thing. We're in a macro environment. We're not in our own little bubble. You also gotta be aware of the supply chain issue. You also have to be aware of inflation. You also have to be aware of when Jay Powell comes out and says, we're gonna go to a full three quarter point instead of a half a point. And that's really what it comes down to. Do your own research. It's a lot of research. So that's it.